Hello and welcome to today's video. We're going to do some harder practice with permutations and combinations. We did some basic ones in the last video. We've done some practice problems in the introductory videos. Now we really just need to be putting it all together and kind of do some more challenging problems. So hopefully you know these formulas. I'm not going to touch on them in this video. Um, if you need to go back, that's a good idea. So just notice the difference between permutations and combinations. Combinations are where the order doesn't matter and permutations the order does matter So basically I like to think of combinations as asking how many different groups can I get from some larger set? Whereas permutations are asking how many different arrangements can I get in general? Okay, so first one how many ways can we arrange eight people at a circular table if there are four men and four women and we want the sexes to alternate? All right, so this is a tough one So we did touch on this example in the last one we, when we thought about how many different ways can we organize eight people at a table but now there's a new constraint because now there's four men and four women and they always need to alternate so i'm going to draw my picture it's going to be male female um men woman men woman men woman is that enough one two three four five one two three four five six seven eight okay so we're good so that's what it looks like when i do this there's got to be eight people, but there need, there's four men and four women. I'm going to kind of break it into two groups. How many ways can I organize the men? Well, there's four factorial, right? And we said again, it's a circular table. So if I have four factorial ways to organize the men, but if I move all the men over one seat more, that would be the same thing. So I'm going to divide by four, and that gives me three factorial. I, just so you know, that the reason that this cancels to three factorial is that four factorial is four. Uh, 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 divided by 4 those cancel and then we're left with 3 factorial because that's 3 times 2 times 1 Okay, and then now so this is the men so this is the ways to organize the men And now I need to multiply that by the ways I can organize the women and I know the logical thing is to say well the women can be organized the exact num same number of ways as the men So 3 factorial times 3 factorial and we're done not quite because what we've done with the men is we've already accounted for the shift. This is um, this is for shifting the people, shifting people. So we can't account for that again. Now the ways I can organize the women are going to just be the four factorial, because I can move them however I want. But it, and if then if I can move the men the six ways, the three factorial ways, that'll be a new arrangement every time. So the women, the ways I can organize them would be four factorial. I would multiply the two together and my total would be three factorial times four factorial and that would be the answer to my problem here. And what would that equal? Three factorial is six times four factorial is four times three is 12 times two is 24. Six times 24, um, 144. Uh, I think that's right. Okay, um, you can check my math there. All right, so 144 ways that I can organize the people at this table. Another way to think about it is to say, okay, what if you, what if I really liked that it was four factorial times four factorial? I'm going to write this one on the left-hand side. So I, I agree that it was four factorial for the men and then four factorial ways to organize the women. And I just don't understand why we divided four only for the men, because that can be confusing. One way I'd like to think about it is, okay, so I did four factorial because that's the ways I could organize the males. I did four factorial, that's the ways that I could organize the females. But then again, now we need to account for the fact that it's a circular table. What I want to do is I want to, if I want, if male and female always have to alternate seats, well, we can view them as kind of a pair. So everyone's going to be together. And if I moved all of this, if I moved both all pairs over one, I basically get a new table with pair one, pair two, pair three, and pair four. And I could move them all over one and it'd be the exact same arrangement. Everyone would be seated to this next to the same person. The sexes would still alternate, but it's a circular table. So it's actually the exact same thing. So that gives me divided by four, which would give me the same answer as I had before. So if that really didn't make sense, why we only accounted for the shifting with the males, hopefully this can offer you another way. And cause this would uh, simplify to three factorial times four factorial divided by um, four again. Oh, well, it would just be three factorial divided by four factorial because of well, the fours would have canceled out from one of the four factorials. So that equals three factorial times four factorial, which again is the same 144. So that's just another option for you if this kind of was confusing. This is a tough problem though. So let's go on to the next one. All right, so now a bookshelf has n fiction books and six nonfiction books. 
If there are 150 ways to choose two books of each type, how many fiction books are on the bookshelf? Okay, so I've got a bookshelf that has some fiction books, it's got some nonfiction books. I'm trying to take two fiction books and two nonfiction books. I need to figure out how many ways can I do that. So I would, is this a permutation or a combination? Well, it's going to be a combination, right? Because if I have the same group of books, it doesn't matter which order they're in. So if I took Harry Potter and then I took, um, I don't even know, uh, a nonfiction book. If I took them, but then I took the nonfiction book and then the Harry Potter book, it would be the same thing. There's no, it, there's no concept of order here. So it's going to be two combinations here. And they're going to be multiplied by each other, right? Because this one's going to be the fiction. There's going to be a fiction combination, and there's going to be a non-fiction combination. We're going to multiply them together to get the total combinations that I have. And I know that the total combinations that I have are is 150. There's 150 different ways. And I'm actually given all the information about the non-fiction books, right? There, I have six, and I'm choosing two of them, right? So six, choose two. And now for fiction, I have n of them, and I'm choosing two again, because I'm choosing two books of each type. So this is the formula that I have, and now I just need to use my formulas to figure this out. So the, the key here was recognizing that this is a combination, but then now you need to use the formula for combination. And remember that n choose r equals n factorial divided by n minus r factorial times r factorial, and that's what we need to apply to this question. So first I'm going to have n factorial divided by n minus 2 factorial times 2 factorial, because 2 is r, multiplied by 6 factorial times 6 minus 2 factorial times 2 factorial. I'm going to simplify that up a little bit. So n factorial divided by n minus 2 factorial. Well, n factorial is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 factorial. That's just the definition of a factorial. So the n minus 2s are going to cancel out. So I'll write it here anyway, though. So that's going to be gone. Then I'm left with 2 factorial multiplied by 6 factorial divided by 4 factorial. If you notice, I can multiply out this 6 factorial into 6 times 5 times 4 factorial. The 4 factorials will be gone times 2 factorial. So 4 factorial gone. And I'm going to simplify on the bottom here. I'm going to get, be left on the uh, top with n times n minus 1 divided by instead of 2 factorial, I can just say 2 multiplied by 6 times 5 is 30 divided by 2 factorial is 2 equals my 150. Well, 30, times, 30 divided by 2 is 15. I'm going to divide by 15 here. I get n times n minus 1 divided by 2 equals 10 because I divided 150 by 15. And then now I I'm going to multiply by 2 and I'm going to n times n minus 1 equals 20. And now I just have to solve a little quadratic. So I get n squared minus n equals 20. And I'm going to bring the 20 to the other side, get n squared minus n minus 20 equals 0. n minus 5. And then when I factor that out, I get n minus 5, n plus 4. So officially n can equal 5 or negative 4. And logically, which one does it have to be? 5, right? I can't have negative fiction books. So n's got to be 5. And what that means in terms of the problem is how many fiction books are on the bookshelf? There's five fiction books. So hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that shows you kind of, this was a good problem to get you really thinking about um, combination formulas and then also factorials. You really have to understand factorials to be able to um, recognize that all the cancellations that you can make here. So the answer is that you have five fiction books. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, and we have one more here. This one's not too bad. A five card hand is dealt from a standard deck of 52 cards. How many hands have cards that are all the same color? So is this a permutation or a combination? Well, it's going to be a combination because if I have the exact same hand, but I was given them in a different order, it wouldn't matter. They'd be the same hand. So that means it's not going to be a permutation because with permutations, order does matter. This time, order doesn't matter. So, well, if I have... So let's consider the colors. So colors, a standard deck of um, 52 cards. There's 26 that are red, my hearts and diamonds. And then there's 26 that are black, the clubs and spades. I wanna know how many five card hands have cards that are all the same color. Well, 
first I'm going to think about my red hands. So red hands. And the thing is, you're going to notice quickly, you probably already know, is that the number of hands that are all red cards and the number of hands that are all black cards are going to be equivalent. And the formula is just going to be 26 choose 5. Because there's 26 cards that I can choose from and I need to take 5 of them. And then plus, now for the black hands, it's also going to be 26 choose 5. And these are black cards. So this would be a hand of full black cards. So that's the answer. It's 26 choose 5 times 26 choose 5, or plus 26 choose 5. And if you wanted to simplify it, you could. I would not recommend it though. It would be kind of, it would be a bit of a pain. So this would be the answer that most tests would accept that that's the number of hands that would have um, cards that are all the same color. A common question is what is the probability? So these, this is number of hands. Number of hands. Um, Okay, what about probability of drawing a hand that has cards of all the same color? And this is important for like poker or something. Maybe you wanted to know this. Well, it'd be the number of hands that are all the same color. Um, 26 choose 5 plus 26 choose 5. That's what we just said. But then it's going to be divided by all possible poker hands, which is 52 choose 5. And we talked about that in another video too. This equals probability of um, all same color hand. And so that would be an interesting one to know, and that could also be a test question. Because general probability is the chance of success, which in this case is um, getting a hand of all one color, that's this part right here, divided by total probability, and that's this here. Those are all the possible hands that we can get. And notice that they're not the same. A lot of people want to think that, okay, 26 choose 5 plus 26 choose 5, that should be the same as 52 choose 5. It's not. It's actually much, much smaller. So hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully now you're feeling a little bit better with these permutations, combinations, also factorials in general. Counting can be a really tough unit in discrete math and just all math in general. So let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.